This is the old Sioux Nation, Indian country, that once sprawled from the Mississippi to the Rockies, from Nebraska to Canada. Sioux still occupy much former territory. Eight reservations in four states, with the hub here at Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, South Dakota. <laughs> Always die hard with these people, one scourge of the plains, with some of the fiercest fighters and finest horsemen America's ever seen. Religion plays a great part in Sioux life anytime. But every summer, the Sioux Nation gathers here for a ceremony that is centuries old, the Sundance. It begins with a prayer to the Great Spirit, maker of the world and creator of all living things. Catches, Ogallala Sioux medicine man, thanks the Great Spirit for all he's given his Indian children. Trees, rivers, mountains, seasons, fruit, buffalo, and all animals. He asked to take away this tree to transplant it in the camp of his tribe and there pray for the guidance of the President of the United States, love of all mankind, and peace in Vietnam and throughout the world. A virtuous young girl has the honor of making a first axe cut on the tree. Always a cottonwood, this tree is considered sacred because the leaf is an exact pattern of the teepee that provides shelter for the Sioux. Two, when an upper limb is cut crosswise, the grain shows a perfect five-pointed star, symbolizing the great spirit. The tree falls so that the trunk rests on cross poles. Great care is taken that it never touches the ground and that no one steps over it. A rawhide cutout of Tantanka, the bull buffalo, is brought out by catches. In the old days, the buffalo gave the Sioux food, clothing, lodging, and fuel. Remembering Tatanka's generosity and that he was here long before people, Indians respect him as a relative. is carried by men who have previously taken part in a sun dance. While they're on their way to camp, where we'll see them later, I'll ride across country to look at some of the West's wildest and wooliest action. You'd have to scour the country to find tougher cowboys than these Indian riders and ropers who enter the annual Pine Ridge All Indian Rodeo. Along with the stars and stripes, the Indians proudly display a flag of their own, the seven council fires of the Sioux Nation. A buffalo doesn't take kindly to a rider. 
even a Sioux relative. As late as 80 years ago, Indians were hunting buffalo on these northern plains until white hide hunters nearly wiped them out. The Sioux seldom killed for sport, made use of every part of the animal. When I heard this buffalo was for sale, I donated her to the Indians in camp. Born to the saddle for their modern business of ranching and herding cattle, most Sioux are naturally expert horsemen. But as the late Will Rogers used to say, never saw a horse that couldn't be rode, never saw a cowboy that couldn't be thrown. the hard way to dismount. Angus calves like this one are tricky to rope and tough to hog tie. Riding bulls fresh off the range is none too easy either. This is a union bull, all right. He heard the whistle and knew it was time to quit. Wrestling 700 pounds of ornery steer to the ground is tough sport. As you can see, it's dangerous, too, when a bulldogger gets his boot hung in the stirrup. It could be fatal. That Indian's name is Pete Fredericks. I thought the great spirit had called him for sure. I saw him later, though, at the reservation hospital, and he was on his feet. The Sioux take a lot of pride in their ability to withstand hard knocks. Time now for a short ride to the Sundance camp. Visiting a Sundance camp is like coming home. Old friends meet and catch up on news.
Thousands of Indians gather here every summer, the seven council fires of the old Sioux Nation. Other tribes, such as Cheyenne, Crows, Arapahoes, who've traveled hundreds of miles in battered trucks and cars, wagons pulled by teams, and some, like me, on horseback. Oh, Edgar Red Cloud is a great-grandson of the famous Sioux leader. A hundred years ago, his great-granddaddy won the only war in which the United States Army admitted defeat. They still call this Red Cloud's country. Edgar thanks me for the buffalo. I move on to pay a courtesy call on my friend One Feather and his wife. How, oh, Chief? How, oh, Chimahu? One feather was surprised I'd come the many miles from California to see him. A wolf call by the medicine man signals that he and the others have arrived with a sacred tree. They've carried it a long way with four ceremonial stops en route. Four referring to the four faces in the life of a Sioux from birth to death. Entering through an opening to the east, the men carry the tree into the sacred place, a circle 100 feet in diameter representing the universe and surrounded by a pine bough shelter for spectators. A hole is ready at the circle's center for the transplanting. With the base pointing toward the hole, the men lower the tree to cross poles, again to keep the trunk from touching the ground. Branches have been trimmed away, leaving a high fork. Catches has extra help from two older medicine men who've led past sun dances, Fool's Crow and Fire. Bright pieces of cloth tied to the tree represent the four cardinal directions, each the home of one of the four winds. The sun dance is held when choke cherries are ripe. So 16 chokecherry branches are tied in the fork with a rope to which tobacco offerings are attached. Here also is an arrow for buffalo killing and the rawhide cutout of Tatanka. Catches places a bag of buffalo tallow in the hole to guarantee against famine in the tribe. Also placed in the hole is a sacred pipe a portable altar with which a Sioux always prays. The pipe has an ancient tradition. Carved from pipe stone, the pipe bowl symbolizes the earth, mother of all life. The wooden stem stands for trees and all plants. Porcupine quills represents animals. Attached feathers, birds. So all living things are joined to one who smokes the pipe.
The tree is raised slowly into place. Transplanting done, the tree now represents the great spirit, believed to be the center of the universe. The sacred place is now ready for the sun dance tomorrow at sunup. The evening before a sun dance is the time for celebrating, starting with a parade of tribal leaders and members of the Pine Ridge American Legion Post. After years of fighting whites, the warrior Sioux set an enviable record volunteering into our armed forces to fight in both world wars, Korea and Vietnam. It's homecoming for Sioux Air Force Captain Ed McGaw, a law student at the University of South Dakota at Vermilion. He's back after 147 missions over Vietnam to take part in the Sundance. Presenting the Stars and Stripes is Enos Poorbear, president of the Tribal Council. <laughs> used to heat up the blood for battle in a war dance. Sioux call this a grass dance because they once tied dried grass under their belts. Later, eagle feathers became popular and still are. Long before the eagle became America's symbol, it was revered by the Sioux above all other creatures. Speaking of birds, dance steps imitate prairie chickens strutting. the ceremony, sun dancers purify themselves in a sweat lodge near the sacred place. Inside, water is poured over the heated rocks for a Sioux-style sauna. The men scrub their bodies clean with sagebrush, then bathe in sweet grass smoke.
Male sun dancers wear long kilts, wreaths and wristlets of sage, a sign their minds and hearts are close to the great spirit. And necklaces with rawhide sunflower medallions, sunflowers because they're the only flowers that always face the sun. Attached to the necklaces are eagle wingbone whistles. Women dancers wear long buckskin dresses and sage wreaths and unbraid their hair. Both sexes dance barefoot. Each dancer carries his personal pipe to be blessed in the ceremony. After the dancers have filed three times around the Pine Bough Arbor, Catches leads them into the sacred place and lines them up facing the rising sun. The ceremony begins as the virtuous girl, one of the dancers, brings Catches a sacred pipe. After filling the pipe, he offers it to the great spirit embodied in the sacred tree, then to the earth mother below, then to each of the four directions as peace is made with each of the four winds to prevent storms. The pipe is then placed in ceremonial position, the bowl resting on a buffalo skull bedded in sage, the stem on a frame of sticks painted blue with the mouthpiece pointing to the sacred tree. Singers gathered around a drum on the arbor's south side begin the opening song of the sun dance. Like the sacred place, the drum represents the whole universe, the stirring drumbeat, the strong, steady heartbeat of power at its center. During each day's dancing, the individual pipes of the dancers are blessed by the medicine man with a sacred eagle wing fan. Dancers have their pipes accepted by John Fire, acting as intercessor. He stands ready with upraised arms at the west side of the sacred place. Each dancer offers his pipe to fire three times, gives it to him the fourth time. For three long scorching days, dancers must gaze constantly at the sun, 
master a complicated rhythm of blowing their eagle bone whistles taught them by the medicine man. Go without food or water, rest only at brief intervals, and stay isolated. On the third day, they will sacrifice their flesh and blood. Small red circles painted on his chest show where each man will be pierced. This ordeal is usually undertaken to fulfill a vow in return for a favor granted by the great spirit in time of need or danger. Men like Magaw promise if saved in battle or if the life of a sick relative is spared to offer themselves in the sun dance. Or it might be to fulfill a vow of thanks for good health and survival in one's family. Failure to fulfill a vow is an invitation to tragedy. Sometimes one dances to aid others, but more often to help himself. And one who seeks a vision or wishes to become a medicine man goes through it to get supernatural power. The Sioux call it Wewanya Wachipi, gazing at the sun dance. Some say it started with the teachings of the white buffalo maiden. Others say the Sioux started it after a holy man named Spread saw it in a vision. Other tribes call it the medicine lodge or torture ceremony. And most Plains Indians practiced it for hundreds of years. By 1870, Plains tribes were corralled on reservations. The government tried to stamp out their old ways. Missionaries didn't understand the sun dance, especially the self-torture in offering flesh and blood. So, in 1883, they pressured the government to officially ban the ceremony. In some cases, the army had to be called in to enforce the ban. Here at Pine Ridge, it was stopped with a show of force and threat of bloodshed by 50 Indian police. manage secretly to keep it alive. In 1933, after being outlawed for 50 years, the Sundance was revived without the self-torture. About 10 years ago, a Sioux named Eagle Feather, he's the heavy set dancer, restored the torture and the authorities couldn't stop it. insult intended here, far from it. By rubbing dirt on this dancer's face, the medicine man reminds him of the oneness of the Earth Mother with all living things and gives him the power of that unity. finally ends, the dancers get their pipes from fire and retire to their special lodge for rest and prayer. After each day of the ceremony, the pipe is passed to those who want to share its blessings. Now smoking the pipe is world champion cowboy Casey Tibbs. On up the third day, the dancers enter the sacred place for the last time and for their cruelest test. As part of his vow, Catches has hooked eagle feathers into his arms, back, and shoulders.
After the daily ritual with the pipes, the medicine men prepare long thongs cut in a spiral from a single buffalo hide and tied to the sacred tree. These thongs are added reminders of the oneness of all things. Flags, each color in its proper quarter, mark the four directions. Each male dancer, in turn, lies on a bed of sage just north of the sacred tree. Using a sharp knife purified in sweet grass smoke, Fool's Crow, assisted by fire, does the piercing. He pinches a fold of eagle feathers, skin, and muscle, runs the blade through the flesh, then before withdrawing the knife, inserts a sharpened peg painted blue. The dancers help to his feet. A noose at the free end of a thong is looped over the projecting ends of the peg. The dancer is guided into position by the medicine man. takes his turn and is pierced. Medicine men sometimes ask the dancer if he wants the cut deep or shallow. If the dancer says deep, the cut's made shallow. But if he says shallow, the cut is apt to be very deep. to do the sun dance in thanks for good health in his family.
as chief medicine man and leader of this ceremony, Catches too is pierced. Dancers offer as many as 100 pieces of flesh cut from the arms. Women dancers may offer pieces of flesh, but are never pierced. Boys, such as this young grandson of Eagle Feather, are encouraged to go through the sun dance in preparation for manhood. But as you can see, he is not pierced and has the thong looped around his chest. Children are pierced for earrings during the sun dance and are considered related to the men whose flesh was lacerated in the ceremony. And any child conceived during a sun dance is considered lucky. Depending on how deep the medicine man made those cuts and how vigorously the dancers tug at their thongs, the men begin to pull loose. Men who faint or cry out in pain are looked down on. Those showing the greatest courage let their wives or sweethearts wail for them. The wounds will heal quickly and swelling or blood poisoning is unknown. Some dance scars will be displayed with considerable pride. The sun dance ends and the medicine men, assisted by old-timer Joe Gap, collect the flags as the dancers collect their pipes. Their ordeal over, all those who've taken part can join their families and friends. And you can bet there'll be some happy feasting in camp tonight. The Indians know a mighty thing has been done. During the months that lie ahead, until it's Sundance time again, great new strength has come to the old Sioux Nation. <laughs>